And ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Wednesday night Bible study here at Expedition Church of the Triad. So glad to have you with us tonight. I want to give you a special invitation to come join us. Uh, we're at 6302 Walter Wright Road in Pleasant Garden, North Carolina. We'd love to have you visit with us, spend some time with us, and uh, find have an encounter with God and see what how good God is. Hallelujah. Um, so join us on Sundays at 10 o'clock, 1030, I'm sorry, 1030, Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock, and um, you will not be disappointed. I, I can just about guarantee you that. Hallelujah. Uh, you want any more information? Visit us at expeditiontriad.org. Hallelujah. And our Facebook is Expedition Church, I think. Hallelujah. Praise God. All righty. Well, let's get into the nice uh, lesson. <clears throat> we began last week um, teaching on expecting the supernatural. Everybody say glory. glory. Hallelujah. Expecting the supernatural. Hallelujah. You know, Jesus gave the great commission to the church in every aspect. Of that great commission was supernatural. Uh, people have tried to make it natural, uh, tried to explain things away as natural, but that's just wimping out. Hallelujah. You know, um, <clears throat> some people do stuff because they don't have an explanation for why it's not working in their lives. And so they have to discount its validity because they couldn't have missed anything and they couldn't be wrong. Okay? So. Uh, the Great Commission was something the disciples were all um, were <laughs> just read that wrong. The Great Commission was not something that the disciples were unaccustomed to. They had already spent three and a half years of working, watching miracles, working in uh, having miracles work through them, signs, wonders, healings, demonstrations, casting out devils, raising the dead. Hallelujah. Uh, saw Jesus walk on water. Peter walked on water. Now, a lot of people want to talk about Peter sank, but Peter walked first. I said Peter walked first. Now, and let me just put it like this, if you, if you, you know, just in case you're wondering, Jesus did not drag him back to the boat. Peter went down there, hold on, Jesus, hang on. You know, and he threw him in the boat. Okay? They walked back together. Okay? I said they walked back together. <clears throat> I don't know why we get these cra crazy ideas, you know, that somehow he, you know, he cries out Jesus, Jesus grabs him, and he's just going back to the boat, dragging Peter along, you know, Mr. Unbelief back there, you know, oh my, you know, they walk back together, hallelujah, all right, and <clears throat> so um, they, they went, th you know, through different things, and every time they had a response. They were ended up with supernatural responses, and we covered a lot of this last week, okay? Um, and so we wanted to get into the supernatural church. You see, in the book of Acts, it's a recording. How many, how many have your King Jimmy with you tonight? Hello? You got your King James Bible? And you get over to chapter 1. Now, if you've got a good Cambridge-style Bible, right up there on the front, it goes, the Acts of the Apostles. All right, the Acts of the Apostles. All righty. So, totally invalid. Now, J.B. Phillips probably has one of the best titles for this book I've seen. It's The Young Church in Action. The young church in action. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And um, which is, is more accurate. Because <clears throat> it wasn't just the apostles. Philip had four daughters that prophesied. All right. There was in the church at Antioch certain uh, teachers, prophets and teachers. Barnabas was one. Amen. And so we go through and we find out there's a whole lot of different people in there that weren't the apostles. They were doing stuff for Jesus. Amen? Hallelujah. So, we want to uh, take a, a little quick survey through the book of Acts. It won't be, very, it won't be super deeper in that depth, but we do want to, uh, you know, like cover this. A uh, survey, yeah. The book of Acts survey. 
okay? Um, and we'll use, we will use J.B. Phillips' um, title to kind of keep us on, on, on track. The Young Church in Action, okay? The Young Church in Action. Now, remember, these are the guys, you know, the, 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 the uh, 12 apostles of the Lamb, Judas being one of them, but he killed himself after he betrayed Jesus. And so then they cast lots to choose a new person to take his uh, place who had been with them from the time they began to go in and out with Jesus. Now, do you think that was a, a God? No. God would have replaced them. But they just thought, well, we got to get somebody, so they cast lots. <laughs> you know, you know, they, they, they weren't perfect yet. <laughs> They're still trying to figure some stuff out. <coughs> Hallelujah. And so um, we have the 12, we have what ended up being the 12 apostles of the Lamb. And they go into action. Jesus commissions them. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. Amen. These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. Amen. Amen. They shall, uh, they shall take up serpents. If they drink any other thing, it shall not harm them. They shall lay hands on the sick. And the, uh, they'll speak with new tongues. They'll lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So they went everywhere preaching the word, the Lord working with them, confirming the word, signs following. Amen. So this is all they know. Go preach the word. They don't have the Pauline revelation yet. So they're sharing the truth that they have in light of the Old Testament being revealed to them as the Christ, Jesus as the Christ. <coughs> and then as Paul, particularly Paul, I mean Peter and James and those, you know, wrote books in the New Testament, but Paul writing the vast majority of them um, comes. And, and so we have, we have a recording here by Luke of this young church in action, what they're doing, okay? Um, and so we look at Acts chapter 10, verse 38, and, uh, you know, preaching a sermon. Hallelujah. Peter gets up, he's, he's been, um, he, he visits Cornelius' house, and he's, Going to preach, preaching a sermon. He gets down here in verse 36. Uh, well, verse 34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth, I perceive that God has no respect of persons. But in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. Okay? That word, I say, Ye know was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. And here's the word. Here is the word. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Now, Please don't take me wrong. But the vast majority, we, we've seen it on TV, you know, um, a lot of places, what they major on, they'll go, God loves you. Okay? That's not the word they were preaching. That's not what they were preaching. Not that, you know, all we got, you just got to know God loves you. They were preaching how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And he went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. Now, does God love us? Yes. Because you go back to John 3, 16, and for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So I'm not discounting the validity and the value of that, but what I want you to understand is um, we got a lot of people going, oh, well, we don't need that tongues. We don't need that Holy Ghost. We just... You need to know that God loves us and that God loves people. Well, see, you, didn't, you cut off the fact that God's love sent Jesus of Nazareth with the, anointed with the Holy Ghost and anointed with power so he could do good and heal all that were oppressed of the devil because he's with him. He wanted to set the captives free. Amen. 
So when we, when we adopt a constricting narrative, as we have often done, we're just going, God loves you. Oh, we, we, no, we don't want to get into that. We just, we just want you to know that God loves you. Well, when we love people, we do things for them. We show our love. Amen? And his love for us is so great that he wants us to be free from pain, free from sickness, free from bondage, free from any satanic captivity at all. And he tells us in that verse that that's what it is. Healing all who are oppressed of the devil, for God was with them. Amen. So that is a manifestation of God loves you. Hallelujah. But they were letting people know that God's love for you is what causes him and what caused him to send Jesus. Okay? You'll see the sign, Jesus saves from a burning hell. You know, um, Jesus loves you. And everybody's pretty cool with that, you know. What if we start putting on there, Jesus casts devils out. Jesus heals you. You have a bunch of Christians going around. Oh, that's one of them. But here it tells us this is what God anointed Jesus to do. Now, stop. Let's go back. Because we can't skip over the things that they already heard. Now, this is Peter preaching. And remember where Peter was when Jesus said this? The works that I do shall you do, and greater than these shall you do, because I go unto the Father. Peter's with, with Jesus when that happened. So when he says this, it has to be in his mind that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, and he went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him, and he said that we're going to do greater than that. We're, now, let's, let's jump a step back again. Before we get to he's going to do greater, he said we're going to do what he did. Then we're going to do greater. We don't skip right to the greater. You know, I've heard, people, I've heard all kinds of people try to explain what that means. Well, that means we get to get people saved, and he didn't. You know, that's the most important thing. Inferring that people being healed isn't that, isn't that important. Because they actually believe that I'll pass away the day last apostle died. Okay? But see, the supernatural church, which was birthed here, and this young church in action, was a demonstration, was the pattern, was the pattern for the church in Acts 29. I hope you all got that. There are 28 chapters of Acts. We are Acts 29. We're operating over here. We're, Acts 28 was not the end of the young church in, or the church in action or the young church. It became a mature church and it was to be in action. We are Acts 29 because we're still carrying out the works of Jesus. Man, we're still to be laying hands on the sick, casting out devils. We're to be, I mean, having miracles take place. Glory to God. That's to be the actions we conduct, actions we carry out. And so G Peter says that this message is that God put an anointing on Jesus. Amen. That would heal the sick. Amen. Break, the, break satanic bondage. And Jesus had already told the church that the works he did they would do and greater than those because he was going unto the Father. What did Jesus say he would do when he went to the Father? What would take place? What event would take place? Anybody remember? He would send the comfort, the paracletos, or the paraclete. And I think it's in its main form. Paraclete. He would send the Holy Ghost. Well, what was Jesus? What, what did Jesus have? How God anointed when did that happen? He was 
anointed when John the Baptist lay, baptized him and the, the uh, a dove descended upon him. Glory to God came down him in the form of a dove and heard a voice from heaven. This is my beloved son. Amen. Amen. He was anointed. And then Jesus left that point, went into the wilderness for 40 days, came out in the power of the Spirit, went to the temple, got the book of the, uh, or the, actually got the scroll of the prophet Isaiah and found the place where it is written, the Spirit of the, the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me. Yeah. Amen. The Holy Ghost had come on him. Whew, hallelujah. And anointed him. See, we, we get all these little cute narratives in the church. Well, if, you got, if you're born again, that's all you need. Well, I, well, what about Jesus? Hello? Don't you think he was really alive unto God? Since he was God manifest in the flesh? <clears throat> he laid aside his rights to deity and the glory, walked among us as a man. Amen. But to show, see, remember, he did not need to be anointed from heaven to have authority over the devil. But because he took his deity rights by choice, laid them aside, why did he do that? Because he could come down here, walk as God, cast the devil out, run and rush out everything, healed everybody. I mean, and he just do anything he wanted to do all the whole time he was down here. And it always be limited to him in one in time and space while he walked the earth. Then why did he do the other? Why did the God, why did the Father have it set up so he would receive the anointing? Why? Why? Because he was the example for the church. We were to receive the anointing to do what to go about doing good amen amen how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and power who went about doing good healing all who were oppressed of the devil for god was with him this all was taking place uh in the ministry of jesus to show the church how to do it, told them that they would do it, told them they would do greater, and then they get in here in the book of Acts or the book of the uh, young church in action, and guess what they're doing? The same thing. They're doing the same thing. They're raising the dead. They're casting out devils. They're healing the sick. They're working miracles, signs, and wonders. I mean, Philip has this major citywide revival. Well, how do you know it was miracles? The people with one accord gave heed unto Philip, the words that Philip spake, both seeing and hearing the miracles which he wrought. Acts chapter 8. But they were seeing miracles. They were seeing bones crack and pop and get straight and people throwing their crutches away. Amen. They were seeing them getting up off of deathbeds. They were seeing blind eyes opened up. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Amen. And I'm just going to tell you, we, we got to get this timetable set right. We're going to start having at least a quarterly healing and miracle rally here on a Sunday night. Maybe the first Sunday night of the third month or whatever, the sixth month. Whatever. We're going to figure it out. Then we're going to get a banner out there. Miracle and healing rally this Sunday night. Amen. We're going to teach on healing and miracles, and then we're going to pray, pray, pray for people. We're going, to do every, we're, going to, we're going to believe God for all kinds of signs and wonders taking place. Amen. To set captives free. We're going to put some stuff in action. Glory to God. Amen. I said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Praise be to God forever. We, we just, we, we, you know, we, we believe in it. We talk about it. Let's do something with it. Let's make that provision for that. You know, we can't wait till they come in on Sunday morning while we're teaching on tithing. It's good. I mean, you got to teach on tithing, you know. And people can get healed in that kind of service. I know they can. But we need to set something aside to specially focus on something like that. And you teach on it. Amen. Um, and now one of the things I, I haven't done like I should with is Brother Buddy used to say, Buddy Harrison, Kenneth Hagin's son-in-law, you know, he would always say, don't ever take up an offering without giving people faith to give. 
I always give them word. You know, I'm going to pass the buckets down. Go ahead and do what you think you ought to do. There's no faith there. So I haven't been as good as I should have been about that. Okay? And sometimes that's pretty kind of you know, yeah, they all, but it's just good to hear it over again. It's good to be stirred up again. Yeah. Amen. And so we have here Jesus, um, you know, be anointed. We are the church and we're anointed. Well, how do you know that? Don't you have you read first John, but you have an unction from the Holy one. The word unction refers to the anointing. Then it goes on saying, but, says, but the anointing that which abideth, with the, which abideth. Amen. We have the anointing. Everybody say the anointing is upon my life. Hallelujah. To do the works of Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Praise God. And so <coughs> one of the first things that happens with the new church is they all get baptized in the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. And this phenomena, I say it like this because that I don't think, think there's a good word for it. That, that English word is not really a good word to describe it, but we'll just call it a phenomena. Okay? And thus I can come up with a better word. Okay? This supernatural event that took place on the day of Pentecost, 3,000 people got saved because of it. I said 3,000 people got saved. Here is a church birthed in miracles. Birthed in signs, birthed in wonders. And then Yin Yang comes along and goes, They all passed away the day the last apostle died. Well, you go Yin Yang. We're going to sing the glories of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, and so we get over to Acts chapter 3. Hallelujah. In verse 1 through 8, and it says, Go ahead and turn that in your Bible. I want you to read, you know, listen, guys, bring your Bibles. Bring a marker, bring a pen, scratch, uh, scratch it all up. You wear it out, we'll get a new one. Brother Hay used to say, <laughs> he'd say, if you can't write in your Bible, go out there to the book table. We got some. Get one of them. You can write in them. <laughs> he's talking about one of them rhema, them faith Bibles. They had a little faith shield on it. Hallelujah. Now, Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour, uh, three o'clock-ish in the afternoon, okay? It's somewhere in that time frame. And um, a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them which entered into the temple. Let's stop. Let's think about something for a second. You know Jesus saw that man when he was on the earth. Had to. He was laid up there daily. Jesus went in and out of the temple. He was laid there daily. Hallelujah. Now that comes over here being led by the Holy Ghost or be having the gifts of the Spirit manifestation. When he went to Solomon's porch, there were five porches full of sick people. But the Spirit of God led him to one specifically. Okay? So here, this guy's here all the time. Jesus has had to have passed him at some point in time. Okay? Why didn't the Holy Ghost, I don't know why the Holy Ghost didn't have him minister to him before that. Maybe there's some things that had to take place and get him to be in a certain position to receive. Amen. I said, Amen. Hallelujah. See, when the Holy Ghost leads you, 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 you go with great confidence. Hallelujah. But you walk up to somebody who don't believe in anything, and they say, well, I don't believe in that healing stuff. Uh, unless it's a gift of the Spirit, you ain't going to get them healed. And it doesn't mean you're not anointed. It doesn't mean you don't have the anointing to heal them. Remember, he could there do no mighty work. Save, save he laid his hand on a few sick folk, or sickly folk, and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. He marveled because of their unbelief. All right? So anyway... They come by this day, and um, this man's there from, from his mother's womb. And Peter and John about to go into the temple, temple asking alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him, hallelujah, um, and said, look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. 
pierce his silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand, lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. He stood up. He leaping stood up. Leaping up stood. Okay. King Jimmy again. Um, and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Now, could it be Jesus left that, that situation there so that his disciples could come after his resurrection and demonstrate to the people the resurrection power of the name of Jesus? It's possible. And they acted on that. Now, and you remember when they get to the temple and they, they say, you know, they're mad at this guy for you know, getting healed. Can't get healed on the Sabbath. You know, I mean, sheesh, God forbid. That was a prophecy about that. God forbid, but okay, come on, guys. <laughs> I was prophesying, don't let that phone ring. <laughs> Hallelujah. <clears throat> don't worry about <clears throat> don't worry about it. When my phone rings, the bat is dead. I mean, especially when it gets on the Mission Impossible one. <laughs> Can't get it off fast enough. All right. And when you read the rest, you go and read down from here. They're mad. They um, pretty ticked off about it actually, and. Um, but they get down here in verse um, 14. But you denied the Holy One, the just, the desire to murder be granted unto you. Killed the Prince of Life, whom God raised up from the dead, where we're all witnesses in his name. Through faith in his name, hallelujah, hath made this man strong, whom you, are, whom you see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of, ye, of you all. Hallelujah. They got mad. You know, they, I tell you what, the Pharisees, those guys were just a bunch of jerks. They were just jerks. There are six days in which to come to be healed and not on the Sabbath day. That's after they healed, Jesus healed the woman with the withered hand. And, you know. You know, you you got to think he wanted to have a um, moment that Moses experienced. Swallow him up. You know, cook him, baby. All right. Here we have a miracle. So they get the, chapter two. They're getting filled with the Holy Ghost. Chapter three, they're healing people already. Amen. Hallelujah. Acts chapter four. Looking down into verse twenty-four. Um, yeah. Well, remember that got brought before the priests and all this stuff, you know. <laughs> Hallelujah. Then they were commanded to teach to preach no more in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And Jesus, well, verse 18, and they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, whether it's right in the sight of God to hearken unto you, more than unto God, you judge. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding, not, finding nothing how they might punish them because of all the people. All men, for all men glorified God for that which was done. Ah, their power, their power, their power is being taken away from them because they ain't got nothing but a bunch of rules and regulations and they're not having the power. For the man was above 40 years old, oh my, on whom this miracle of healing was showed. And they being that go went to their own company. Hallelujah. And reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them. And when they heard that, they lifted up the voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God, which has made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is and in them is, who by the mouth of thy servant David hath said, why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? The kings of the earth stood up, and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For of a truth, against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, both Herod 
and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together for to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings. And somehow protect us, Jesus. We're just trying to do what you wanted us to do and they're persecuting us. <laughs> they, they, they said mean things. Uh, they hurt my feelings. They told me I couldn't preach in your name anymore. Oh, Lord, what are we going to do? That's not what they did? Oh. Oh. Behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word. Listen, oh, listen here. They said, listen to what he says, that with all boldness we may preach thy word. By, so he's saying this is how we're going to do this. This boldness is going to look like stretching forth thine hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child, Jesus. Oh, okay. You're going to tell me I can't preach and teach in the name of Jesus. And you're just ticked off because this man got healed and you couldn't do a thing for him. You were probably making him tithe on the, on his, um, on the gifts people were giving him. Now like the IRS. Hello? Somebody gave you a $20, a 20%, you know, I mean, a, 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 a nice size gift because they just wanted to bless you and they want 20%. <clears throat> you know, on money that was taxed, that had been taxed, that was previously taxed, that's always been taxed. Anyway. Now think about this. We want to speak the word with boldness. And that is basically this, that includes you stretching forth your hand to heal. And that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy, uh, I mean, amen, by the, by the name of thy holy child Jesus. And this is the next verse. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spake the word of God with boldness. Now stop. Sherry just preached. That ain't what they prayed. That we would speak thy word with boldness by stretching forth thine hand to heal. And signs and wonders may be done in the name of thy holy child Jesus. See, this prayer is inclusive with not just preaching the actual word, but having it accompanied by signs, wonders, healings, miracles. Amen. He shook the whole place where they were sitting. It was not an earthquake tremor from some, you know, 4,000 miles away. We're always you know, trying to figure out how to explain away everything. Okay? Who's always trying to explain away everything? Devils. Demons. Hello? All right. Next chapter. Not, not an exciting miracle. <coughs> Previous verse, they came in and laid money at the apostles' feet. Chapter 5, verse 1. But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, stole a possession and kept back part of the price, his wife being privy to it, and bought, brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. Nothing wrong with bringing a certain part. But notice he said that his wife being privy to it. They had conspired to deceive the church by looking like they really were doing something big when they were just only given a part of it, which was fine to have done that. And we find out later. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? And to keep back part of the price of the land. Whilst it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not thine own power? Whilst I conceived this thing in thy heart, 
that thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. And great fear came on all them that heard these things. The young men arose, wound him up, carried him out, and buried him. That's exciting, isn't it? But I tell you what, that does away with this Mickey Mouse junk in the church of the LBG2Q preachers and ministers and marrying people that are the same sex and all this junk. There was fear in the house of God for doing unrighteous things. Now let me say, Peter tells him, so it's obvious from the thing they, that his wife being privy to it, him saying that when you sold it, it was still in your hand to do what you wanted to do with it. They could have just brought the money and said, look, I sold this parcel of land um, and I'm giving the Lord 60% or 50% or whatever, but I'm keeping the rest. That was nothing, nothing wrong with that. But they gave under false pretense. They gave what like they gave it all. Because they wanted people to think well of them. Hello? Now, we know the story, the best story is Sapphire comes in later. They ask, did you sell the land for some? Oh, yeah, we sold it for just that much. She fell dead. And guess what happens? The Bible says the church grew. The fear of the Lord. There were, there were many, mostly, almost all mostly, supernatural events that were um, blessing. But here's one where God's, God's not going to let someone enter in and destroy the work of God. By bringing the wrong spirit in. Amen. 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 We got churches inviting the wrong spirit in now. They're inviting it in. They're putting it in their pulpits. Hello? They're condemning the congregation for not accepting these things. I heard, uh, I heard recently there was a, a thing that a minister put on his thing. Well, they had this, um, it was obviously a little liturgical church, so um, I couldn't tell if it was Methodist or if it was Presbyterian or something like that, but, um, you know, and they prayed to the all-inclusive, uh, no, the gender-neutral spirit. Everybody say, right out of the pit of hell. The gender, I mean, the, the um, all-inclusive spirit, the gender-neutral spirit. And they had their sashes on, purely demonic. Hello? You're a hater. No, you're the hater. Because you'd rather damn people and send them to hell so you can look cool and great in front of your friends and don't, don't think before the Lord Jesus Christ comes back, that we're not going to see Ananias and Sapphires in the church. They fall dead, pray to the all-inclusive or the gender-neutral spirit and things like that. Uh, 30, 40, about 40 years ago now, Brother Summerall was at Rama, and he's talking along the lines of, you know, the, the power of God and stuff, and he said this, he prophesied, the days of Ananias and Sapphire will return to the church before Jesus comes back. Why? Because see, here, when they fell dead, and great fear, verse 11, came upon the church. And, it's, and, and upon as many as heard these things. Hallelujah. And as by the, uh, by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And the rest durst no man join himself unto them, but the people magnified God. And believers were the more added to the Lord. Multitudes of men and women. Hey, well, stop! don't stop there. In so much that they brought forth sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches, that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. And there came out a multitude of the cities round about Jerusalem, bringing sick folk, and then that were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed, every one. 
Wow. Wow. This outbreak took place because people fell dead in church. By the judgment of God. This outbreak of miracles, this outbreak of signs and wonders. My wife was trying to tell me something. Oh, 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 oh. Did it, had it popped up? Yeah. You were so intense. Well, the preacher's really good. All right. So we have this, we have, all of a sudden, the church is growing. Miracles are taking place. They're bringing people from all over the place to get healed. And it started with a miracle. It was a supernatural event. Supernatural miracle. People falling dead in church for bringing the wrong spirit into the, into the church. That spirit was sent to disrupt the church. They were sent. They, they listened to the devil when that pride got in the way. Apparently when the other guy brought this funny money in and laid it at the apostles' feet, Everybody must have been some kind of like, whoo, look, oh, man, awesome, you know, glory to God. And they didn't want to be outdone. Pride. Pride entered in. And because pride entered in, hallelujah, <coughs> they tried to deceive the church. And you see, that pride was one of the three sins of the Garden of Eden at, at Adam's fall, and God had to shut that down. And hear me well. Before the Lord Jesus Christ returns, God's going to shut churches down. Ministers, quote, so-called ministers, will fall dead in the pulpits for their obstinance and rebellion and being yielded, being emissaries of the devil, sent by the devil to destroy the church. We we'll say, where's all that love y'all talk about? This is the love. Because they're keeping people from getting saved. They're keeping people out of heaven. They're damning people to hell. And part of these miracles in the church are going to bring a judgment on those who oppose the truth. God doesn't. We got so far over with God as a good God. Come on now. Uh, us Word of Faith people, we got way over there. We, we didn't even know what to do with the Scripture. Behold the goodness and the severity of the Lord. We didn't know what to do with it. Hello? Because God's good all the time. And I do believe God's good all the time, but not in the way we limit it, that every single person on the planet is only going to experience the goodness of the Lord. They're never going to be, you know, chastened, ch chastened, chastened, rebuked, reproved, and those who are not even born again, but are sent by the devil to destroy the church, judgment could never come on them. You remember the governor? who had his cohort, I don't know what he was called, I forgot who he was called, deputy or something, his deputy or whatever. When, when they were preaching to him, he was open to the gospel, and he tried. He withstood them, he tried to stop them. And, a, and, a, and a, a mist came on him, and he went away blind looking for somebody to lead him. You never, where's that, Bill? Huh? Well, I know. Well, if you've never heard of it, that means other people may not have heard of it. 
it was it Sergius something? It's in there. It's in Acts, yes. Acts 13. Okay. They seemed being sent forth by, verse 4, and when they seemed being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, departed unto Seleucia, and from thence they sailed to Cyprus. And when they were at uh, Salamis, boy, can't you just say they, they went over here and went there and came here? <laughs> they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews, <coughs> and they had John to their minister. And when they had gone through the Isle of Paphos, Paphos they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew, whose name was Bar-Jesus, which was the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus. <coughs> I had that part right. A prudent man who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. But Elymas, the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, withstood them, seeking to turn the deputy away from the faith. Then Saul, who is also called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes upon him and said, O full of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of righteousness, of all righteousness, Wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? And now the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness, and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. Now, don't stop. Don't, listen, stop. Now, that just undoes all your, ain't never judgment happening. This is the dispensation. It did here. And there's a reason for it. Then the deputy, when he saw what was done, believed, being astonished, and listen to this, astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. Everybody say, wow. wow. Say it backwards. Wow. Say it upside down. Wow. They're not calling for you this time. <laughs> Janie's better going. <laughs> Hallelujah. Luke, recording this says that that what came on him? What came on Elimus? The hand of the Lord. To be honest with you, he's, he's pretty blessed he didn't get barbecued on the spot. God tempered his anger. Hello? Now, we don't have any record of anything ever different happening with him. We don't know how long his season was. But it caused, the, it caused Sergius Paulus to get saved. That miracle of judgment brought him into the kingdom. We just got to get ready for all kinds of stuff happening. I remember when... when I'm, I'm trying to remember which preacher preached it, but years ago, um, if you don't know anything about Pentecostalism or the, the Pentecostal move of the early 1900s, um, they were, cons I mean, your, your straight line denominations just were brutal in some places. They actually took ministers and tarred and feathered them, literally, and ran them out of town. They're showing the love of Jesus. <laughs> Literally, they did. And um, there was a case, there was a place where um, they were they were coming at this Pentecostal minister. A bunch of rednecks is what it was. They're a different breed. 
I know. I grew up down east. I knew a bunch of rednecks. They're a different breed. Okay? They make racists embarrassed. Just telling you. Um, the pre Pentecostal preacher, they had gotten him, harassed him, done all kinds of stuff to him to, you know, try to run him out of town. And one of them had a whip. They, they had threatened to whip him with a, like a, a you know, psh, whip. And uh, instead, he came up and took it and popped him on top of the head with it. And then the Spirit of God spoke. I don't know if somebody was there. I don't, I don't remember who was there. If that guy did it, he, the Spirit of God came on him. As you've touched my servant, so shall I touch you. And about three days later, he was in a car wreck and it split his head wide open and killed him. I don't know. Stop it. We're moving into a time where miracles, signs, and wonders are not all going to be glory hunkadory. But what will happen because of it will be glory hunkadory. Because masses will come into the kingdom. And they'll be astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. And all this junk going on in the churches and all this political wokeness and all this, you know, agenda-driven gender garbage will be judged of the Lord. And people, listen, it's keeping people out of the church. Denominations are selling out to it thinking we'll get more people in our church. No, you're bringing the demon spirits into your church. And it's keeping people out. Or it's perverting churches having transgender story hour. With a bunch of old perverts in there with kids climbing all over them. I'm sorry, the natural it makes me want to get a two by four and slap them right upside the head. You pervert. And then the parents letting their kids climb all over that demon spirit. There is a house cleansing coming on, coming up. Because I remember Jesus said, you know, the Word of God tells us that He will return for a glorious church, having not spot or wrinkle. There's a cleansing. There's a cleansing. So the glory can flow. So the glory can manifest. So the power and the demonstration can be seen. So that the hearts of men can turn to God and break the power of those demon spirits and shut down those churches where Ichabod is written over the door because the glory of the Lord has departed. You are indeed like whited sepulchers full of dead men's bones. But it shall not be so with the church. The true church, the ones who are full of faith in the Holy Ghost, those who walk in the supernatural, those who yield themselves to praying in the Spirit and hearing the voice of God and walking out and asking God to fill them with boldness by stretching forth His hand to heal in the name of the Holy Child Jesus. It shall not be so for them, but it shall be that the glory shall descend and the manifestation of the glory shall draw the hearts of men and women to that place of deliverance and to that place of freedom and to that place of glory. And it shall be known through the earth that the Lord, He is Lord. There is none like Him. And who alone can heal like you? And who alone can deliver like you? And who alone can save like you, O Lord? And the mockers and the scoffers shall witness the fury and the anger of God with one last chance to turn their hearts. And oh my, but great, great shall be the ingathering. 
because of it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. Well, that doesn't, God's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to the knowledge of the truth. But those that have given themselves to Satan and refused to turn from their wicked ways shall face the anger of God. And those sent by the devil to stop those from turning to God. Woe be to anyone who should cause the, one of these little ones to stumble. There is a woe be on them. Just want to know when Jesus was saying woe be, he wasn't talking about that drink or whatever it is, woe be, that's out there on the market. That's not what he's talking about. The woe be was not a good thing. Not a good thing. But the glory. The masses that should be brought into the kingdom and swept into the glorious kingdom of God. The overwhelming masses that shall come to know Jesus. Because of the supernatural church. And they will stand in awe and fear of the people of God. And put the enemy's camp in derision. Hallelujah. And there's, oh, Lord, Lord, but Lord, Lord, no, Lord, no. Lord, Lord, in this upcoming election, the, seek me. Do not seek after a candidate. Do not seek after uh, this or that that you think is right. But seek me. Call upon me. And I'll put the enemy's camp in derision. And they'll turn one upon another. And they will devour each other. So that my will will be done. My will will be done in the earth. Hallelujah. 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 I was, I was debating a little bit with the Lord because I didn't want to get into politics. <laughs> I just didn't want to get into that. Hallelujah. Glory to us. We got to, we got to be seeking the Lord in all things. Oh, my, 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 my. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, behold the threatenings of the world. Grant unto your servants that we may open our mouth and speak thy word with boldness by stretching forth your hand to heal and that signs and wonders might be done by the name of thy holy child, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Oh, so, and I'm going to tell you something. I'm, please get as many people in here as you can get in here. There has, oh, in the past few weeks, there has been a release. There, oh, the, the room's filled with it right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My, 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 my. Glory to God. Hallelujah. There's a release of the prophetic anointing right now that's taking place. Some things I can't even explain, but it's filled in here right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My, 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 my. them here for your kind of glory. It will not be an end of something. It's the beginning of the launching, the outpouring, the oh, the redirect, all, oh, all, oh, dress connect of many things. I don't know how you got to get them here. Strap them to the top of the car. I don't care. Get them in here. Supernatural. 
supernatural events. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 I just looked up, you know, I looked up a couple minutes ago or so, and just, the room was just bright. Brighter. It was, it was, it was, what did I say? It was just brighter. Hallelujah. Well, I know that's the glory. Now I don't see a cloud, but it's just brighter. I'm just like, okay. The glory. Hallelujah. 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 There's much to be done, much to be wrought. And we're setting it, we're setting the Shekinah Glory meeting as our release of faith point to launch. Not to go, oh, we had a good rate meeting. No, we're launching. We're launching out. We're launching into deeper things. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, mm, mm, mm. next Wednesday, actually, guys, I think what we're going to do is we're just going to take, we're going to take Tuesday. We're not going to meet on Zoom. We're just going to come in here Wednesday. Next Wednesday, we're going to come and pray. Okay? For the Shekinah Glory meeting together as a church. Well, you ain't going to preach. I ain't, no, 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 no. You don't understand the value and the importance of corporate prayer. Together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And... Uh, We've tried to justify remote everything since COVID, but I can tell you, if we were on remote, we probably wouldn't. We probably wouldn't be experiencing this. Maybe somebody would be in one place, but you know, I mean, well, this is this is awesome. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So next Wednesday night, Tuesday night prayer will be moved to Wednesday. We'll join those together, live in person prayer here on Wednesday night of next week. Okay. Hallelujah. Because then you know, we've got one day and then which kind of glory starts. Amen. Get your mama over here. Tell your tell her Pastor Ed said, in Jesus' name, get her backside over here. Okay? That tells us that that for let's see, Friday night to Sunday afternoon. So tw Sunday at twelve. Friday night at seven. That's twenty four hours. That's twelve, that's thirty six. That's about another six, about 42 hours. There's nothing more important on this planet than spending time in that, that, that time. You can see the grandkids next week. Hello? You and husband go on a date the following week. Come on now. This 42 hours of their ministry is essential. Hallelujah. Maybe that's don't tell it quite like that. Tell the pastor, I really want you to come. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Huh? Oh, you coming home? Okay. Awesome. Drag Cassie over here. Hallelujah. Bring him. Hey, what'd you say? You bring him what? No, no. Okay. Well, grab the Tom's people and bring them. No, no, that's, if you can invite him, invite him. Hey, listen, guys, I, I, you know, I'm not weird, but you need to come hear this. Yeah. You know? If they look at you when they go back to work, like, it's okay. Because let me tell, let me tell you, let me tell you, when I worked at Parker's Barbecue in Greenville, when I got saved, they made fun of me. They made fun of Janie. Brother, I thought you said your wife was saved. She is. She ain't. She's got on pants. They can quote this. The Bible says, thou shalt not wear that, you know, which pertains to a man. And all that kind of stuff. I said, the guy who wrote it was wearing a dress. <laughs> a robe. 
It's okay. They made fun of me for a long time. Except. Except when the girl walked in that day and she said, it's serious. She's the one that was always calling me brother with that twang. Brother. It won't a compliment. It wasn't respect. It was mock. So I found a lump this morning. And I need you to pray for me. The kitchen was was long was a long kitchen, fifteen deep fryers, and right down here at the end of the deep fryer was a hallway out out there where um, you know all the, the supplies and stuff were. I said, "Step right here." We just stepped out into that hallway. I laid hands on her in the name. Of, I said, "I command this to die and to wither and to leave her body in the name of Jesus. Lump dry up and disappear." I said, "Now go to the bathroom and check yourself." She came walking out. Her eyes were big as saucers. She said, it's gone. She said, it's gone. And she went and called me, brother. <laughs> Within a few weeks, every time I turn around, they're coming to work. Brother, I went to church last night and got saved. They were getting saved. They were having revival right there. Don't you worry about it. Don't let the, don't let the balking, don't let the looks, don't let all that get to you. You just go on about your business and do what you need to do. Hallelujah. What can they say? No, that's not my thing. Okay. But they might come. But they're not going to come if you don't ask them. Because they're not going to know about it. We got to get. We just got to go ahead and go with the bold. We got to do the bold thing. What's that song? Do your groove thing. Do your bold thing. Do your bold thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, come on, guys. Y'all heard that? Shane, you ever hear groove, do your groove thing? Yeah, Daniel. Oh yeah, Dick. Never heard do your groove thing. Okay. I guess I'm just hipper than some other people. Anyway. Praise God. Thank you all for joining us tonight. If you want to send your offerings, go ahead and send them electronically. Uh, dollar sign, uh, Expedition Triad, hallelujah, or give at expeditiontriad.org for your PayPal. We love you. God bless you. Be here October 6, October 7, October 8, Friday, Saturday nights at 7, Sunday morning at 1030. You will never be the same in Jesus' name. Till we meet again, remember these words from 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, that this is the victory that overcometh, I'm sorry, that whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Good night. God bless you. See you next time here at Expedition Church.